And good evening. We are doing it live right here, weeknights in the 5 o'clock hour in Los Angeles. Motac on Money, five nights a week for you. Live on the air right here on 790 KBC, streaming live online worldwide at kbc.com. And your on-demand Motac on Money podcast at kbc.com, Apple iTunes, all your favorite podcast platforms. Well, happy Cyber Monday. Stocks kicking off the new week with a bit of a pullback coming back from the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. For all of last week, we saw a pretty good week. The Dow was up 1.3%, reaching its highest close since August, while the S&P 500 was up 1% last week to the highest since August 1st. And the Nasdaq gained nearly 1%. Looks like the markets uh, closed uh, last Thursday for the Thanksgiving holiday, followed by an abbreviated session on Friday. And the net result was a winning week with the Thanksgiving holiday break in between. Stocks did struggle for momentum today following a soft session out of Asia. According to Market Watch, a news there that profits of China's industrial companies increased by just 2.7 percent for the year to October, raising concerns about deflation in China, the world's second largest economy. We're, of course, uh, watching what's happening with spending on this side of the pond. Online spending on Black Friday reached record levels, and today, Cyber Monday, is expected to be the biggest online shopping day ever as inflation-fatigued shoppers zero in on the biggest holiday discounts. Online spending on Thanksgiving Day up 5.5% to $5.6 billion, according to Adobe Analytics. And consumer spending on Black Friday was up 7.5% to a record $9.8 billion, helped by electronics, including smartwatches, TVs, and audio equipment. The company expects spending on Cyber Monday to range from $12 billion and 12.4 billion numbers that would make it the biggest holiday online shopping day of all time. We're living it right now, folks. Of course, we're watching what's happening in the Middle East. They've stopped shooting for the time being with a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas terrorist Elon Musk on a visit to Israel today said those intent on murder must be neutralized. Elon Musk and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu touring an Israeli community that was attacked by Hamas. Elon Musk also met with the Israeli president to discuss rising anti-Semitism on social media platforms. Well, in case you hadn't heard, Congress will not be playing Grinch this holiday season, recently ending the threat of government shutdown until after the holidays. The recently approved spending package keeps government funding at current levels for roughly two more months while a long-term package is negotiated. Meanwhile, the biggest jump in government bond yields in 40 years recently set off alarm bells about the federal budget. We'll get an update tonight from Washington from America's leading taxpayer advocate, Grover Norquist, president of Americans for Tax Reform. More horror stories at some L.A. area nursing homes where we're seeing an increase in cases of neglect and abuse, such as signs of bed sores, falls, dehydration, new calls to increase minimum standards for nursing staffing hours and making it easier for consumers to get information about hospitals and nursing homes for their loved ones and make sure you know your rights if you or your loved one are neglected or abused. I'll talk about that important subject tonight with elder care attorney Zorn Basich at elderabuselegalgroup.com. But first, on your money, the markets, the economy, crypto, and the whole works tonight. Joining us live now, money manager Ken Winans, president of Winans Investments, market historian, author of Investment Atlas 1 and 2, and Forbes magazine contributor. Ken Winans, thank you very much for taking the call, coming off the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Hope you had a, a great holiday weekend. Happy holidays to you and and uh, did Santa Claus come early this year? Give us your view of things here at the moment. Frank, I love it when I, I mean, earlier this year, when I told everybody that I thought that it was going to be very volatile because of the historical trends, I was laughed at. Oh, it's different this time. We're more technologically advanced and all those others. The simple fact of it is this market has been incredibly seasonal all year long. And when I'm looking at it, Yes, I think the Santa Claus rally it, uh, kicked off earlier last month. Uh, when I look at not just the tech stocks, but when you look at all the different sectors, there's only three that are troublesome. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But the other thing that's amazing is that when I look at, you know, we talk about seasonality in the stock market, but there is also seasonality in the bond market. There's seasonality in the commodity markets. There's seasonality in real estate. And you're beginning to see it all play out. And, the, and I think that the major trigger was when the Federal Reserve basically may indicated, although they are not going to drop rates anytime soon, and I, do, and I think that includes most of next year, they're not going to be continuing the tightening. And so that gives everybody a chance to kind of gear themselves and prepare for what we are now in a more normalized interest rate picture. And that includes what you just mentioned a moment ago about bond yields rising to meet what's currently going on with budget deficits 
government threats of government shutdowns, you know, state and local governments having trouble funding debt. All these kind of things are playing into that. But the simple fact of the matter is, if you have a lot of cash sitting on the on the sidelines during December and January, you need to keep in mind you are betting against history if you decide to stay there. So it's a good time to put money to work. On the air live with money manager Ken Winans and uh, the impressive holiday sales numbers uh, coming in, including uh, today, uh, Cyber Monday expected to be uh, the biggest uh, Cyber Monday ever. We saw record uh, spending on Friday. How is the consumer holding up in all of this in the face of, of higher interest rates, um, pretty much record uh, credit card usage and, uh, and everything else that's going on? You know, there's been a lot of articles out that a lot of people are going for the old-fashioned way of paying on time directly to the retailers, not using credit cards. I mean, I still think that you're finding people obviously using the credit cards like you just talked about, Frank, but an awful lot of people are making arrangements directly with retailers, whether they're using retailer credit cards, whether they are using their debit card. Many of the, of the banks are making an arrangement with their uh banking customers for those kind of things. But it is not a surprise to me when I look at the various retailers, many of them I mentioned as opportunities last month. When I look at TJ Maxx, TJX, when I look at Costco, uh, I still think the automotive area, I just went today and, and had to get some new tires for my car. And like everybody else, I have a bit of sticker shock when I look at what things cost for my car. The simple fact of the matter is I might not like it, but I needed new tires. I am not necessarily going to shop around for the best tire. I'm going to get it where I, there's availability. I think that's much to be said about the automotive retailers. I still think will be a really good place to put money really between now and going into next year. Again, people need to make sure their cars operate, especially in Southern California. Guess who else got new tires today? I did. We're on the same page here, Ken. <laughs> Yep, decided today was the day for it, and there were some great sales, actually, yes. Yep, so there you go. Well, I, I mean, hey, I'll give you another one. I have to get a battery for my motorcycle. The batteries, for, for again, for motorcycles, are double what they were a year ago. So, again, it's availability. It's finding it where you can find it and getting it, and it's not necessarily hoping you can find it on Amazon. You're going to go to a motorcycle shop or an automotive shop to get what you need. So it's true. People are putting money there. Frank, the other thing, and again, I talk about seasonality. Uh, I mean, again, we have all know about the Santa Claus rally, but you might be surprised to know that the other areas that have massive Santa Claus rallies happen to be in several key commodities, and two of them tonight that I'm going to talk about are gold and silver. Gold and silver, I mean, again, if we're going to talk about the tortoise and the hare, since the market's all-time high in December of 2021, yes, we've seen a nice recovery, but the simple fact of the matter is that the S&P 500, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100, Dow are nowhere near new highs. They are still making up lost ground. What is in new highs and has continued to really baffle everybody with its strength is gold and silver. Now, I am not a gold bug. I never pretended to be. I will sell it as much as I will buy it. But according to my research, if you go back since 2000, gold and silver traditionally have big bumps November, December, January, and February. And I'm talking in terms of as much as 10 to 12 percent. And I think a big part of it is people, I, I mean, certainly there's countries around the world that they, they I mean, basically buy gold and silver because they don't trust their banking systems. But quite frankly, I think of a lot of it's tied to jewelry. You talked about electronic use. What's the key thing people are buying for the holidays? Electronics. Tear open those boxes and you'll see one of the major components in it is gold. So, again, you're seeing this going over and over and over again. And I am, I'm of the opinion I think gold could break into a new bull market next year just based on the data that I'm looking at. So, Again, people have been traditionally light on commodities all year long. Those are two right there, and you can own them through the ETFs, GLD and SLV. You don't have to go out there and buy gold coins. How wrestling really works and how you get the ratings. Eric Bischoff and Conrad Thompson explain on 83 Weeks. 
too much time is spent discussing talent's age. The younger demo is just as excited about a Paul Heyman or a John Cena or an Undertaker or Becky Lynch or I don't care what their birth certificate says. They're going to draw a younger demo because they're mm-hmm. fun to watch and they're great entertainers. 83 weeks on YouTube or wherever you listen. You can buy them as an ETF. On the live with money manager Ken Wyans, it sounds like you like a gold chain over blockchain, Ken, but it's hard to ignore that uh, big rally in uh, cryptos that we've seen uh, this year with with uh, Bitcoin up about 100 uh, percent and some of the other uh, names have even had more eye popping gains. Uh, what about uh, crypto? And uh, you mentioned the concern about the banking system and all that. And that seemed to have elevated uh, the cryptos here this year in the face of uh, uh, another big wall of worry out there. Well, what's interesting about the cryptos is in light of all the bad news about the exchanges and the big backers of them, clearly there's big money backing them still and still believing in it. Um, You know, I I mean, uh, my opinion is that cryptos act a heck of a lot more like the NASDAQ than they do any kind of currency around the world or any commodity. So it's not a surprise they bounce back. But again, here's another point, Frank. Cryptos are nowhere near their all-time high. They've got a long ways to go. So again, I think crypto, for those who want to own it, I'm not saying don't buy it, but to buy it and not own other commodities, I think, is a huge mistake, especially when you adjust it for inflation and when you adjust it for risk. So I would just encourage, look at what's out there. Anything that's in that area will be fine. You know, I I think that a big part of this, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it in a moment, when we look at what's going to happen going into 2024, obviously it's an election year. But one of the things that you're very clearly seeing right now, I still think there's going to be this movement of money out of bond funds into bonds. My office gets called because we 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 are uh, you know basically a manager of corporate fixed income investments, and I have a lot of people saying that look, I've not made up any of the losses I've taken from 2022 in my various bond funds, and I need to just buy and hold individual bonds. So I think that trend is going to continue, and especially when we're looking at the borrowing costs for next year are going to skyrocket, especially for the Treasury and also municipalities. I think a lot of people are, again, shifting money into dividend-paying stocks. They're shifting it into preferred stocks. They're shifting it into corporate bonds. So that's also a very prevalent trend that we see right now, which, Frank, what I want to bring up, and this is counter to the way that I manage money, but you do have a lot of people out there who are investors who buy into the I want to own stocks for dividends. Well, the groups you're going to want to look at are the consumer-based companies, uh, some of the oldest consumer-based companies. I'm talking about food companies, um, apparel companies, all these kind of old line type companies. Well, the average dividend is nearly 4%, but the big winner in the dividend play, if you're inclined to play it, would be in uh, utility companies and telecom companies. And I know everybody focuses on Verizon, paying that, I think it's an 8% dividend, although the stock is at a three and a half or four year low. But my point is the entire group is down. You might want to play a utility ETF that has that high dividend if you are that dividend type of investor. So there's a little bit of everything out there for everybody, Frank. But my key point is I would not keep a lot of money sitting in cash through the month of December and January. If there's a time to make money, it's now. Excellent points on the air live with money manager Ken Winans and something like just 20 some odd days left uh, in this uh, year for uh, any uh, trading activity. So we are winding down to 2023 and heading into uh, 24 and the Magnificent Seven, of course, uh, that was a big uh, subject uh, of attention that this year, uh, Ken, with NVIDIA and Tesla also uh, in the mix there. Um, looks like both of those uh, moved higher today. What are your thoughts on the, the Magnificent Seven here as, as the year winds down and heading into the new year? You know, I, I'm one of these kind of old dogs that I, I probably don't change my, change my tricks all that much. I am not a fan of celebrity CEOs. I'm not a fan of celebrity stocks. I love to find those companies that have quietly done well over time and and make it happen. And so, I mean, you bring up Tesla. And I know a lot of folks in the audience own Teslas, love them. That's great. The simple fact of the matter is Tesla is still down 33% off of its all-time high. Now, it is true. It had a 92% rally this year. Congratulations. But my point is, this is not hitting a new high. When I compare that, darling, with something like Microsoft, 
Microsoft is up 58% this year, so not as high as Tesla, but it's also in record territory. It's up 13% in the last 20, 23 months. I like those kind of companies where they've done well. They're famous. They're well-known, but they're not necessarily darlings. So I would just caution everybody. My experience is in darlings get bounced around a lot with volatility. Look for those names that are very important to the economy, but don't necessarily make the headlines every day. All right. I haven't seen Steve Ballmer on stage lately, but if we do see him, he's got to be pretty happy about Microsoft uh, stock. Of course, he's busy with the Clippers these days, but uh, can you imagine him hopping around seeing a Microsoft uh, at an all-time high recently? Uh, and I'm sure Bill Gates feels the same exact way, Frank. They're, they're laughing all the way to the bank. And again, remember, they're in those trends that we've been talking about, AI, cloud-based servicing. They're in that. They're just not in the headlines every day because the CEO of Microsoft is somebody who could probably walk into any restaurant in Los Angeles and nobody would know who that person is. For me personally, I like CEOs like that. I like upper management like that. So it's just, again, we want our celebrities to be people we well known in movie and theater and music. I don't necessarily need them running my investments. That used to be the case with Jeff Bezos. Nobody who knew who he was when he went, went around L.A. And now, of course, uh, very, very famous. And, of course, he's in Hollywood, too, with the Amazon Studios and all that. What about um, what about Shopify? I see that one up uh, more than 5% today. Amazon, of course, uh, has had a big run uh, and is benefiting from uh, today's activity, uh, Cyber Monday. Um, any thoughts uh, about e-commerce or anything else uh, that's uh, emerging here today? Yeah, the, you know, there's another theme for next year, uh, and I know that, look, it, it's nothing we want to talk about because, I mean, Southern California is still having a hangover from the, uh, the, the various strikes that went on in the entertainment business. Unfortunately, I think strikes are going to be something we're going to be dealing with for the next couple of years. I know we don't want to hear it, but we have to think about it. Unfortunately, Amazon is one of those companies that seems to be in the crosshairs of organized labor uh, I mean, I'm sure it's a surprise to Amazon because they've tried their best to be, you know, a, a good modern corporation trying to do all they can in, to help the, you know, climate change, try to, you know, make things fair around the world. But the reality of it is they're a target for strikes. So I would not be surprised that Amazon has a great holiday season and then enters into, you know, uh, contract negotiations early next year. So, again, I would just be watchful of that. The other thing I would bring up about e-commerce you know, for me, I, I, I mean, there's no such thing anymore as e-commerce and brick and mortar. There's no brick and mortar company that does not he have e-commerce. And personally, I've been amazed at how great a lot of the websites look for the old line retailers. One in case in point is Nordstrom. They've done a great job of bringing themselves forward, and they're playing the game very, very well. And I think that, again, with retails, it's going to be a function of logistics. Do you have whatever people want in stock? And so as I was commenting earlier, you know, it, you might just want to buy it right then and there because there's no guarantee it will be around tomorrow. We're still dealing with some of those logistical issues, and especially we all know about the issues with China. So, again, there's a lot of those kind of things going on. But, Frank, at the end of the day, anybody who sells anything during the holidays, I think you want to be a buyer of it, even if it's just a short-time pop. Terrific, Ken. Thank you very much for that comprehensive analysis of what's happening. Look forward to our next update as soon as possible. That is money manager Ken Winans, president of Winans Investments, market historian, author of Investment Atlas 1 and 2, and also Forbes magazine contributor. We'll be looking for your next article soon. Ken, thank you very much for taking the call here this evening. Thank you, Frank. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much, and have a great holiday season. This is Motec on Money on 790 KBC. Friends, people like you and me have our ear to the ground in all things business. We like to be informed and well-prepared. And as important as finance is, I want you to have a plan in case you're hit by someone not paying attention to the road. Thinking ahead serves us well. Even still, we can get caught off guard as people are so focused on their destination that they might not have a plan that they're in an accident that's not their fault. And that's why I encourage you to put my friend, Attorney Clark Fielding's number in your phone. That number is 833-88-SHARK. So if you're hurt in an accident, you'll be ready with your strategy to make Clark Fielding your first call. Fielding Law aims for the highest possible settlements, considering you might need long-term care, rehab, compensation for lost wages, and any ongoing physical or emotional pain. So if you're hurt in any kind of accident, call for a free consultation with Fielding Law. 
You can trust them. They're honest, respected, and your strategy in case you get into that unexpected accident. Motorcycle, truck, pedestrian, scooter, hit and run, boating, or bike accidents, you name it. Call 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK. Or go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. 790 KBC welcomes. Want to take a guess? Yep. Brian Adams coming to the Honda Center January 28th. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. And right now, Caller 9 wins at 1-888-790-5222. You can get a pair of tickets to the show furnished by Live Nation. If you're Caller 9, call right now, 1-888-790-5222 for Brian Adams at the Honda Center January 28th. Motaco Money continues here in 790 KBC. A pullback for the stock market to kick off the new week. Coming off the Thanksgiving holiday weekend, the Dow down 57 at 35,333. The S&P 500 down 9 at 4,550. And the NASDAQ down 10 at 14,241. Looks like November, best month of the year so far for the stock market. And uh, taking a look at where things stand here right now, we've seen um, a nearly 9% jump this month of uh, November for the S&P 500. Strongest monthly performance of 2023. The S&P 500 has soared nearly 19% so far this year. The yield in the 10-year note, of course, had that big uh, jump this year, above 5%. It's back down to 4.39%, pulling back those fixed-rate mortgage rates, which kissed 23-year highs recently. They've come back down over the past several weeks. Bitcoin down about 300 now at 37,080. We see Ethereum down 57 at 2017 and Doge at 7 cents. Oil's been pulling back lately, down nearly 70 cents now at 74.86 a barrel. At Southern California gas pumps, we're back to $5 a gallon on average in the Los Angeles area. 536 now, the average price for premium and 593 for diesel. And now the latest news for you right here on 790 KBC. Motaco Money continues here on 790 KBC. Good evening. Uh, looks like Americans continue to vote th with their feet when it comes to looking for lower tax burdens. That means clearing out of California in most cases. John Phillips, of course, here on 790 KBC does a great job uh, on that subject. In case you hadn't heard, by the way, Congress will not be playing Grinch this holiday season. Recently ending the threat of a government shutdown until after the holidays. The recently approved spending package keeps government funding at current levels for Roughly two more months while a long-term package is negotiated. Meanwhile, the biggest jump in government bond yields in 40 years recently set off alarm bells about the federal budget. Let's bring in America's leading taxpayer advocate now to talk about all this, Grover Norquist, president of Americans for Tax Reform. Grover, thanks very much for taking the call. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Uh, back to business here now and give us an update on what's happening there in Washington. Well, in Washington, a lot of people are watching Argentina. Uh, because there on Sunday last you had an election of a gentleman who is considered, you know, conservative, libertarian, actually. Uh, it's one of his dogs is named after Milton Friedman. Uh, so um, he ran against 60 years of Peronism, of uh, statism, of some sort of weird collection of labor union bosses and, big business monopolies and the government, the tariffs that, you know, so the cost of living was raised to the roof. Argentina used to be, if not the wealthiest country in the entire Western hemisphere, um, close to, uh, it was for a long time, uh, one of the wealthiest countries in the world, uh, richer than some of the European countries. And then they decided to go for socialism and they got poorer, and poorer and poorer. But with the guy they just elected, they're looking to dollarize, which is to uh, get rid of the Argentinian dollar and go to an American dollar. And that would end the 140% inflation they're running now. So if you think uh, things couldn't get worse than, than in terms of price increases than we have with Biden, Argentina's done worse. That is quite a story. Yeah, we've been watching uh, that uh, outrageous uh, inflation in many uh, countries in South America. Argentina certainly uh half redneck, half posh. 
100% fun. Trey Croward and Corey Ryan Forrester try and learn fancy culture in putting on airs. The host of the Medium Popcorn Podcast, Brandon Collins and Justin Brown. Okay, so Paddington 2 had like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes for you. You guys ruined that? Justin came in and like took it down like two points because of his rating. That's the time we started getting death threats. Yeah, Yeah, I'm not not surprised. People worship that movie. Putting on airs. The podcast is on YouTube and wherever you listen. Where leaders go, learning follows. At Harvard Business School, we offer in-person and virtual executive education programs on a broad range of business topics. This is where the brightest minds in business come together. Add your unique voice to an exceptional peer group. Come learn from others' diverse perspectives and from our world-class faculty. It's your time. Go. To apply, visit hbs.me slash go. That's hbs.me slash go. Among the highest inflation rates there, and and thanks for for highlighting that. Uh, so, what lessons are, are being learned there, um, given that um, tidal shift there of uh, the government in Argentina, and what is the buzz in Washington about uh, what's happening there, and uh, what um, might be needed uh, on this side of the pond here? Well, it's a cautionary tale for uh, Biden. The United States uh, has less. Uh, they don't put up with inflation as much as the Argentines have because they've gotten used to it over the decades. Uh, people get very upset about uh, the dollar, U.S. dollar weakening. They did when Jimmy Carter was president, and he lost. And at the time, if you may remember, Reagan was viewed as the you know, unacceptably right-wing movie star, movie actor, had been governor for eight years, but the, the biggest state in the country, but still actor, not really a person for politics. And uh, Carter lost because of that inflation, because of that slow growth. Exactly what Biden's given us and exactly what Argentina was, was putting up with. And uh, it looks as though uh, one of the other parties will cooperate with uh, the new conservative free market party. Uh, and they can get a lot of their agenda through uh, reducing tariffs, which make everything in this country less competitive, bringing their taxes down, and then most importantly, reducing the number of government employees. On the air live with taxpayer advocate Grover Norquist, the president of Americans for Tax Reform. We saw this drama play out recently. Uh, the threat of a government shutdown has now uh, been uh, put on hold uh, for at least another couple of months, right? Uh, when they get back to that, uh, what is that going to mean uh, for uh, the budget, uh, especially aid to Israel and also uh, Ukraine uh, still uh, requesting uh, additional funds? Um, give us uh, an update on, on how that's uh, looking as this uh, next battle comes up. Sure. The Republicans in the House said, look, let's give Israel the $14.5 billion. We'll take it out of IRS hiring. Done. All set. The Senate said, Republicans said, we like that a lot. The Democrats said, no, we like the IRS more than Israel. So they put that on hold. Uh, now, a bigger deal is likely to be on the table. Aid to Israel, aid to Ukraine, aid to Taiwan, and all things that the president wants, and, and many Republicans support as well. Um, but what the Republicans are requiring is that we do something to protect the border. And even Biden's fellow Democrats are telling him he's in the process of losing his election over his mishandling of the border. And just as we're sort of looking out at Argentina to see how much patience people have with with that lousy economy and with inflation, in the Netherlands, a liberal, progressive, Holland, Netherlands, um, they just elected a guy who was considered beyond the pale a number of years ago, largely because of his concerns about illegal immigration and uh, coming into uh, the Netherlands, uh, but also the overspending and the overtaxation in the Netherlands. So he ran a conservative, more free market campaign, but also raised questions about unlimited uh, immigration from other countries into the Netherlands. Uh, and our friend, Mr. Biden, has got American uh, mayors screaming that they're going bankrupt because of illegal immigration. 
And if the mayors won't turn out the vote for Biden, then he can't get reelected. So the, the deal that seems to be coming together, watch this all blow up for some other reason in a couple of months, uh, is Biden's, Biden agreeing to border security. Maybe he keeps his word, maybe he doesn't, in return for um, the support Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan are asking for. Uh, I think that's likely to happen because the pressures on Biden on his mishandling of the, the border are very, very strong inside the Democratic Party. On the line with Grover Norquist, and uh, there's a report in the news here today that some Californians are leaving for Texas. Uh, they could be replaced by Texans leaving for California. But uh, the fact is uh, you've done an extensive uh, review of all this, and it uh, looks like uh, Americans, and specifically Californians, are still voting with their feet in favor of lower tax burdens. And as we've seen a big exodus from California to Texas and other lower-cost states, give us an update on, on what's happening with all that. Sure. This has been going on for at least 20 years. People leaving California, top tax rate, 13.5%. People leaving New York, 10.5%. 14% for New York City, because there's a city income tax as well as a state income tax. And moving to Florida, no income tax, state income tax. Uh, Texas, no state income tax. But also more nearby Nevada, nearby at zero or close by Arizona, 2.5% going to zero over the next few years. Uh, There are seven states with no income tax. There are another 12 states that have committed to go to zero and that are in the process of doing that. In the next 15 years, there'll be another 12 states that are at zero. So the number of states you can go to if you want to go from top rate of 13.5% down to zero uh, is not going to be seven, and you may not... One of those is uh, Alaska. You may not have that on your list of places to move to. Um, But uh, there'll be another um, 12 added to those numbers. What this has done is people in Texas used to worry, and I grew up in Massachusetts, where people would move to New Hampshire. No income tax in New Hampshire. Significant income tax in Massachusetts. Um, The people who leave Massachusetts and go to New Hampshire are Republicans. The people who leave California and go to Texas and Nevada and Arizona and Florida tend to be Republicans. There you have it. Well, so, Grover, thank you very yeah, much yeah. for that thorough update here tonight. We do appreciate it. That is America's leading taxpayer advocate, Grover Norquist. Don't tread on him. Grover Norquist, president of Americans for Tax Reform. Grover, thank you very much. We wish you a great holiday season and hope to talk to you again very, very soon. This is Motac on Money on 790 KBC. Motag on Money continues here in 790 KBC. Good evening. More horror stories at some L.A. area nursing homes where we've seen terrible cases of neglect and abuse, such as signs of bed sores, falls, dehydration, in some cases criminal charges are even filed in these cases over the summer. Three people were convicted of elder and dependent abuse that left residents of an unlicensed boarding care facility in Riverside County emaciated and dehydrated. The state attorney general got involved in that case. Now there are new calls to increase the minimum standards for nursing staffing hours and making it easier for consumers to get information about hospitals and nursing homes for their loved ones and make sure you know your rights if you or a loved one are neglected or abused. Let's bring in uh, attorney Zorn Basic now, elder care attorney Zorn Basic on this important subject tonight. Zorn, thank you very much uh, for taking the call. Zorn Basic at elderabuselegalgroup.com. For decades, uh, you've kept us well informed, Zorn, uh, on this important subject. Uh, Tell us what you're seeing out there uh, these days. Well, the level of care is critical, and one of the things that they're going to change is this minimal staffing, hopefully, where you have more people attributing the care they need to the families that need it. Right now, what's going on is uh, a lot of people go into a nursing home and no one really sees them for hours at a time. It's it's a real problem. Um, the level of care is really questionable, and it affects everybody. It doesn't matter whether you're poor, rich, wealthy, uh, if you have a loved one in one of those facilities, you want care. One of the important things that we always suggest everybody consider using is their cell phone. If you're going to have someone going to a nursing home, you have no choice because they've broken a bone, fallen down, got a bed sore, a UTI. Um, you're going to want to take pictures of everything you can to make sure you can document things. The other real important issue is 
if you document it, odds are you're going to get better care from mom or dad or whoever you're concerned with. Um, something as simple as water is probably the most pivotal thing that happens in a nursing home. Uh, dehydration causes UTIs, it causes bed sores, causes all kinds of problems, and people could simply fix that with just being there long enough to make sure that the loved one drinks enough water to stay hydrated. Tell us about some of the heartbreaking situations that you've seen. Uh, I've certainly have seen it uh, over the years when when somebody pulls that help button and and help uh, doesn't come. Right? Actually, the, the, the call <laughs> the call button is basically the no call button. Uh, you keep bringing it, you keep bringing it, you keep bringing it, and nobody shows up. The problem with that is people need to go to the bathroom, and more often than not, they're a little uncomfortable about the fact that they have to do it on in the bed. So what they're going to do is call and ask for help. And then nothing happens. No one shows up. They finally decide they're going to get up and go to the bathroom alone. And there's where the hip gets broken. They end up in the hospital in an environment that's really going to put them down. And odds are most people won't survive the hip surgery and the movement through the system with that kind of issue. When you get a call from a place like that and, and they, they tell you mom uh, has a bed sore, uh, should that set off uh, alarm bells? Um, is that a sign of neglect uh, right there? Oh, absolutely. There's no reason to have a bed sore unless someone has not been turned. So when you, uh, if you if you find yourself going into a nursing home environment with a, a loved one, or someone you don't even love very much, you don't like them, but you want to make sure you get the care they need, you want to make sure that you go in with a camera and you take pictures of their behind and their um, elbows, of their uh, heels, and make sure that there are no open sores. And then every couple of days, you should be going in and checking all of that. The moment there's any bed sore out there, they should be turning them at least every two hours, and they should be making sure that the pressure points are well hydrated. But again, it requires the family to get involved. It doesn't really matter if you're poor or wealthy. What matters is that your eyes are on what they're doing and making them nervous that they are going to take care of the loved one you have there. And certainly people are paying a fortune for uh, this type of care uh, these days. So um, they darn well uh, better be getting uh, proper care. And I, I see, um, looks like in Washington, uh, as well as uh, in Sacramento, there are new calls to, to try to make these places uh, better staffed uh, and improve uh, the overall uh, situation here. Zorin, what would you like to see uh, happen here? No, I absolutely would like to see more, more hands-on for every, every body that they're helping take care of. But importantly, what's going on is you know, a normal normal stay in a nursing home is about fifteen to thirty thousand dollars a month. Most people really don't pay attention to that because they don't deal with it. But once maybe in their lifetimes, and they've got to make sure that they're looking at all the angles. Just like you had the gentleman on earlier about the tax issues, you've got to make sure you know what your options are and where the money might come from to pay for that care. And if you don't get that care paid for, and the person gets ill and gets injured and falls breaks a hip and ends up dying, then you can at least make sure you get some kind of retribution for the fact that they weren't cared for appropriately. And if that, enough families complain, odds are things will get better. Such an important subject. Uh, and in uh, the decades that we've had these conversations, Zorn, uh, every time uh, I speak with you, uh, I get calls uh, thanking me for having you on and and uh, what you provide is a tremendous service uh, and very valuable information always. And when it comes to elder care, uh, you're the best as far as I'm concerned. Elder care attorney Zorn Basic at elderabuselegalgroup.com. Zorn, thank you very much. We wish you and everyone there, uh, all of the attorneys there, all the very best uh, for the holidays. And thank you very much uh, for taking the call here tonight. Thank you. The football season is underway, and Believe Podcasts are talking about it. When he went home and went to sleep, Michael Parsons was just terrorizing him. Believe has podcasts covering all 32 professional teams and many of your favorite college teams, too. And to be only producing 15 points a game, that's something that is definitely disheartening. Sideline to sideline, end zone to end zone. As a quarterback, I would expect him to be acting like that. Take the accountability. Put that on yourself. Don't put it on your teammates. Search B-L-E-A-V Podcasts wherever you listen.